The GOP primary for Arizona governor is still too close to call this afternoon. Carrie Lake maintaining a narrow lead of about 12,000 votes, even as she continues pushing baseless claims of fraud and has already declared victory, even as those votes are still being counted. If she wins that race, you can add Arizona to a growing list of swing states where election deniers are one step closer to being in positions of power that could control how elections are run. There are new Republican nominees for secretaries of state and, and governor in Nevada, Pennsylvania, and now Michigan and Arizona, too. The New York Times reporting that this is causing concern over the future of free and fair elections in 2024 and beyond. The Times writing that Wisconsin could be next. Quote, Republican candidates for governor there have vowed to overhaul the state's election system in response to unfounded claims about problems in 2020. All of the major GOP candidates in the race have pledged to eliminate the Wisconsin Elections Commission, a bipartisan agency that oversees state elections. Let's bring back in, uh, Nick Corsonini, uh, byline, uh, bylined on that reporting in The New York Times. And Charlie Sykes is back with us as well. Nick, you interviewed a number of experts who were deeply concerned about these nominees. Talk to us about what their specific fears are at this moment. Well, what they described to me very succinctly was that this is like putting arsonists in charge of the fire department. <laughs> and basically what you have in these states from Arizona to Michigan to Pennsylvania to Nevada, um, and we'll soon see in um, Wisconsin as well, is candidates who, will ha uh, candidates who are running for offices that have very critical roles in our electoral process. These are secretaries of state who are often the chief election official. They set their kind of rules and manners of elections. You know, during the pandemic, it was secretaries of state a lot of times who took it upon themselves to come up with mitigation uh, plans to vote safely during COVID, such as mailing out absentee ballot applications. Uh, it's also candidates for governor in Pennsylvania, uh, Doug Mastriano, you know, he also gets to appoint the secretary of state, but governors uh, play a key role in certification of elections and, you know, sending presidential electors to the electoral college sometimes. And then it's also attorney general. Um, you know, they are the representatives of the state in a lot of these fraud cases and can launch their own investigations, which could create uh, some chaos. So when you look at the past statements of, a, of someone like Mark Fincham, who won uh, in Arizona this week, uh, the Republican nomination for secretary of state, you see someone who has taken a, a bunch of uh, conspiracies and, and debunked claims about election machines. Um, he actually tried to get rid of election machines in his own election. And he also claimed that there was a lot of fraud and it was being, quote unquote, flooded with paper uh, before he even won. So he was questioning, questioning his own eventual victorious campaign. If he's in charge of elections, there's a lot of election experts out there, Democrats and even some Republicans who say this could really unmoor us from a tradition of, you know, respecting the will of the people, nonpartisan elections, and that election administration is carried out in a very nonpartisan manner. Charlie, you mentioned uh, a little bit earlier that Trump was going to be in your great state of Wisconsin tomorrow, attempting to torpedo a powerful Republican in the state assembly race because he refuses, of course, to do the impossible, right? The New York Times right. reporting that, quote, after months of toying with Robin Voss, who has the speaker as the speaker of the Wisconsin Assembly is the most powerful Republican in state politics, former President Trump endorsed Mr. Voss's long shot primary challenger on Tuesday in a futile, futile effort to push the state's Republicans to decertify the results of the 2020 election. So is Trump willing to take down the entire Republican Party to to soothe his bruised and fragile little ego? Well, yes, I should say and, big and ego. <laughs> and, and, and he's prepared to divide the party rather bitterly. So he's coming in uh, on behalf of his endorsed candidate for governor, uh, Tim Michaels, uh, who's parachuted back into Wisconsin after being absent for about a decade. Uh, and Michaels is basically all in on not just the big lie, but being open to decertifying the election. So we have a candidate for governor uh, who may win the primary next Tuesday, who's made it very clear that that he is that he will be joined at the hip when it comes to uh, Donald Trump. Now, as far as going after Robin Voss, I mean, what a what a cautionary tale because you know Voss's hands are not clean here. He appointed a former Supreme Court justice uh, to run a bogus investigation uh, that uh, fed fed the fires of speculation about uh, the uh, the election. He has aggressively tried to suck up to Donald Trump. Uh, you know, flew on his plane to uh, pledge his his loyalty. 
But for Donald Trump, it's not enough just to be loyal. You have to uh, be willing to take a step as extreme as decertifying the election. So we're going to find out whether or not he is uh, going to uh, uh, oust the speaker. Now, what's going to be interesting will be how much time will he spend here in Wisconsin basically attacking other Republicans? Uh, during this campaign year. And I know I've talked to a number of Republicans who are really, really concerned that, that uh, you know, as, as Donald Trump decides that he's going to play the role of mad scientist here in Wisconsin, how much damage is, is he going to do to fellow Republicans in the service of his big line? We're about to find out over the next few days. Charlie, let's let's uh, push into that a little bit because it's 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 just annoying as hell to me uh, uh, at this point because we know how these primaries go. They you know they're big fights and at the end everyone comes together. But this has been very different. What do you make of some of these defeated candidates like Michigan's Peter Meyer coalescing behind these same election deniers for a, you know for a GOP unity event coming together? What's the danger here of coming together like this, legitimizing? The lies that these folks put out there, what do you think of this? Well, this has been the cancer that's been afflicting the Republican Party for the last six years, is that the people who know what the nature of the threat is decide they're not going to stand up or go along. So in Pennsylvania, you have the you know non-team crazy Republicans going along with Doug Mastriano. Who uh, ought to be disqualified uh, in in Michigan? Peter Meyer, who has gone out of his way to say, you know, that that uh, this election denying uh, has you know poses an existential threat to democracy, the day after his defeat by an election denier, embraces him. So uh, you know, uh, this is part of this 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 uh, this team loyalty that ignores all of the other issues that are happening here. And very, very disappointing because, you know, Meyer had made a strong case. He voted for the impeachment of the president, and now he's going along with it. I mean, there is a moment at which you put country over party. And, uh, Michael, I mean, you've done that. It is possible, and yet it is vanishingly rare among many of these Republican officials. But but that's that's the question. What comes first, the country? a democratic republic uh, or your party loyalty. And we're seeing the choices that they're making. I just like to see po- folks take a damn stand for the country and stick with it. That's the, the, just stick with it, you know? But here we are. Nick, thanks so much for your reporting. Very much appreciated. And Charlie, always thank you, my friend. Thank Up you. Up next, WNBA star Nick, Brittany Griner sentenced to nine years in, Rus- in a Russian prison. The U.S. today making a commitment to bring her home. The very latest coming up.